Trees are keen to tell us so much. They'll tell us about the land, the water, the people, the animals, the weather and time. And they will tell us about their lives, the good bits and bad. Trees tell a story, but only to those who know how to read it. I'm having a nice little walk in the forest today, which is not uncommon for me. It's what I do most days, walking Rocco. However, today is a little bit different because I don't have Rocco. Marta has him and I still decided that I wanted to come for a walk because it's what I enjoy doing. And I thought it would just be a slightly different experience to come out here without Rocco. So I've got my bag on, I've got stuff to make a coffee, I've bought my drawing stuff and I've bought my tree book. So I'm hoping to have a nice relaxing walk today where my attention is solely on my surroundings, how I'm feeling, rather than just on how cute Rocco's being. It's different already, but it feels quite nice and I'm just going really nice and slowly. I am somewhere new, so yeah, hopefully we're gonna have a nice walk. I absolutely love this time of year. I mean, it's a bit colder, but it's not freezing cold yet. But I don't mind it being colder as long as it's dry. I don't care on the weather. I do care on the weather. I hate rain. As much as I try and like it, I hate it. There's nothing you can do with it. It's just annoying. Temperature wise, I can do whatever. The colors at this time of year are absolutely stunning. Cause you've got like, oranges, reds, browns, the big, like, still get the bright green. It's just, I mean, I love it most times of the year to be fair, but there's something about like the reds and oranges in with the green that just makes it a bit extra special. It's also really weird not having Rocco. I didn't realize quite how much of a distraction he is going on walks. When I used to have my headphones in, I was just distracted on all levels. Whereas when I have him, I think I'm just constantly looking out for him, looking out for the surroundings, anything that, you know, if I see a squirrel, or if I see a runner, or if I see another dog, I'm like, right, how's Rocco gonna react? Do I need to get him to come to me? And we're like training him at the moment, so he's constantly on my mind, 24 seven anyway. But when we go for a walk, yeah, a lot of my concentration is on him. I'm not sure if you follow me on Instagram or not. Please do if you don't already. But I put on my stories the other day when I was going for a walk that I wonder if these trees could talk. These absolutely massive trees that have been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. What they would tell us, what they would say, what they've seen, what they've heard. I bet there's just so much stuff. And like, look at this one, it's huge. So I put that on my stories and then one of the people that follows me said, why don't you listen to see what they say? And initially I was just like, trees can't talk. <laughs> but you know, I love the idea. It's romantic, it's nice. I could have a listen, but yeah, I didn't hear anything. And then since then, someone that I tattooed, I've already tattooed him and I've tattooed this really beautiful tree on his thigh. And one of the reasons why he got this tattoo is because he was reading this book how to read a tree. And then I tattooed him on Saturday and he bought me the book. I'm just blown away by the people that I tattoo. They're so lovely. Thank you, Adam, for this amazing book. And it's just come at a time where I am just like looking at the trees and just thinking, wow. And I'm finding it today. I've not even started the book yet, but I'm already looking closer at the bark at how they're all together and how they're apart and the ones that have died and the leaves, the roots, everything about trees is just pretty insane. So I'm going to be geeking out on trees for the foreseeable.
I also think that I've not really um, been that appreciative. Appreciative? I don't feel like I appreciate trees as much as what I should, and I don't know if other people feel like this as well. Trees do a lot for the planet, for us, for wildlife. So I think trees deserve a lot more credit than what we give them. What I give them. Seems I, not like I've not noticed them before. Obviously I know that they're there, but just like the awe of them. Thank you, trees. I'm too busy in awe of my dog. Oh, wow. 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 All right, mate. I think it's actually quite good that I'm here on my own without Rocco. I rely on him quite a lot for my comfort and happiness. Like if you watched my wild camping with him. Yeah, I kind of wanted him to be there because I was terrified to go on my own. And I think in the back of my mind, I knew that he would not be okay. So I knew that, yeah, it probably wouldn't happen. So I could use him as an excuse. And now coming out on this walk on my own, it's like practice of being on my own, on my own. I think I rely a lot on other people's like opinions of me. I do things for other people rather than myself. And I want to get more in tuned with what I want to do, what I think is cool, what I think will make me happy. Why I just want to do certain stuff is for me, not for anyone else. And I do find that very hard <laughs> to not be like, hey, I did this. <laughs> Give me some gratification. <laughs> Tell me how cool I am. Tell me how much you love me. Drama. Oh, these smell really nice. Mmm, fresh pine. Whoa, time for a coffee break. Scoop of creatine. Trying to have my coffee a little bit later in the day and I'm just having one a day at the moment because it's not great to rely on caffeine for your energy and stuff. I used to have a coffee like first thing, waking up, either myself or Marta would make a coffee and we would have it in bed and then I'd have another couple, which are mainly decaf at work, but still there's caffeine in there. Whereas we I uh, listened to a podcast, I can't remember which one it was, and it said about trying to limit your caffeine intake. So you've got to wait like 90 minutes, two hours after waking up. Otherwise, it can really affect your cortisol levels, which is something I'm trying to avoid at the moment, or just in general with life. I think it's good to avoid raising your cortisol levels where it's not needed. So yeah, it's now 10 o'clock. And this is my first coffee of the day. And it's not the best out here with this stuff, but when I'm just having one a day, I still really appreciate it. Also got a couple of protein balls as well, because it's good to kind of eat with caffeine too. And we're off. Not ready yet. Get that caffeine in there. I've got my spoon as well, so I might have to use my pencil. This is the book that I got gifted, How to Read a Tree, by Tristan Gooley in the Gooleys. So, do I heat up plastic and stir that, and I know that that's no good for me, or whatever is coating my pencil, which is probably also some sort of plastic. Hmm, decisions, decisions. Let's go with the pencil. We'll have a little tidy up before we do story time. One of these. Well, now I've got a gooey mouth. Maybe a protein ball first was not a good idea. Okay, chapter one, the art of reading trees. 
from an introduction. Trees are keen to tell us so much. They'll tell us about the land, the water, the people, the animals, the weather and time. And they will tell us about their lives, the good bits and bad. Trees tell a story, but only to those who know how to read it. Ah, so I need to read trees, not listen to them. Over the years, I have enjoyed collecting every meaningful characteristic of trees that we can observe. It started with natural navigation and an obsession with the ways in which trees can make a compass. They grow bigger on their southern side, for example. This developed into a fascination with how trees make a map for us. The trees that grow by rivers are different species from those on hilltops. And this blossomed into a curiosity about the subtle clues, the patterns that hide in front of our eyes. Do two trees ever appear identical? No. But why? Every small difference in a tree's size, shape, colour and pattern reveals something. Each time we pass a tree, we can note a unique feature and read it as a clue to what the, that tree has experienced and what it reveals about that spot we stand on. A tree paints a picture of the local landscape. I've got so many bits of protein ball in my mouth. You notice that the leaves on a tree have a strong pale line down their middle and recall that this is a sign of water nearby. Moments later, you see a river. Many trees that thrive near water, including willows, have that distinctive white rib on their leaves. They look like they have a stream down their middle. My aim in this book is for us to immerse ourselves so deeply in the art of reading trees that we learn to find meaning where few would think to look. And once we have seen these things, it is possible to unsee them. Trees will never appear the same again. It's a joyous process. We're about to meet hundreds of tree signs. I encourage you to go and look for them as this is the best way to become part of their story. It will help you read, remember, and enjoy them for the rest of your life. How exciting. It's not too bad. I think this really is just like the perfect book for where I am right now and how I'm feeling about everything in the world. It's easy to get overwhelmed. I get overwhelmed easily, but I think that's understandable with what's going on around us. I'm scared about everything that we're doing and us not evolving to that. So when it comes to like food, things that we put in our bodies, all this ultra processed stuff that we're just not used to, sugar, probably caffeine. There's just so many things that we put into our body that we're just not used to and it's doing us so much harm. So I wanna go back to nature and eat as much as what is natural as possible. And then like technology and the advances in technology. And I, can, I understand that a lot of things are really good when it comes to science and medicine. But I also think that we're like over medicated, we're over stimulated. Um, and that's just, it's so scary to me how we're meant to be, meant to be living our lives. And I literally just want to go and live in the woods with no one around me, grow as much of my own food as possible. And I think more and more people are feeling like this. I think there's some sort of shift. I think there's a lot of people going the other way as well. But I think there's a lot of people that are kind of realising the way that we're going is not sustainable. It's not particularly good for us. And I don't know if that's just my algorithm and the people that I follow that do similar things. But I'd like to think that there is a movement of people realising that where we're heading is not perhaps the best way. And this book, Learning to Read Trees, like, it's so cool. And other books that Tristan has written are The Secret World of Weather, Wild Signs and Star Paths, How to Read Water, 
a walker's guide to outdoor clues and signs, how to connect with nature. I feel like that might be the next book after this. The Natural Explorer, or that one, because that is now my new name. And The Natural Navigator. I feel like I am actually quite natural at navigating. A lot of people say, oh my God, you're like GPS, because I somehow know where I'm going most of the time. So grateful, thankful for this book, thankful for Tristan, thankful for Adam, thankful for the trees. And I look forward to going more and more on this journey of getting back to nature and being a human and not a robot. Since going on this kind of journey of slowing down, getting back to nature and the connections that I have at work, tattooing people, like we're bound to talk about things. And it's been actually really surprising to me how many people are on a similar journey or people that I can like really share these experiences with. Starting off, I think, with Stu, the guy that I tattooed who was very much into mushroom foraging and recommended my first ever mushroom book. I think that was one of the key moments of this whole new chapter in my life. So that started with a human connection and talking about it. And throughout that time, from then to now, which was over a year ago, the amount of people that I've talked to about what I've been up to and then what they're up to and recommending either podcasts or books or people to follow. It's been incredible. It is very important to have human connections. I know that, most people know that. But I think I, I do struggle with that a little bit when it comes to just out of work and it is rare for me to spend time on my own. So I do cherish these moments. Perhaps moving forward, concentrate a little bit more on those social connections and something that I kind of mentioned a little bit with the advances in technology that I think that kind of disconnects us in a face-to-face -face situation. I think it's different a little bit for me because I'm face to face with a lot of people every day at work. Yeah, instead of going home and watching YouTube videos about people that are out in nature, perhaps make some connections and see if someone wants to go for a walk with me that I don't normally go for a walk with or something like that. Getting more human relationships face to face is something that I feel like I could be lacking in a little bit and would like to work on moving forwards. If you look back in time of how we've evolved as humans, we are, were tribal beings that rely on other human beings for food, for helping with family or whatever it is. We watched, um, what did we watch yesterday? Ah, so we watched YouTube Yes Theory yesterday on this town in America where they have no internet, no signal, no phone signal, no Wi-Fi. It's like illegal to have Wi-Fi or to go on Wi-Fi, which is just mad if you think about it. Their sense of community was so strong. It was incredible. They met up and they played instruments and hung out together and had conversations. And it just made me think, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that more where it's not texting or keeping up with people through Instagram. I just feel my battery's drained after working, so my social battery. But sometimes some people power up your social battery by seeing them. Anyway, just a pondering thought that I would like to include because it's amazing what happens when you do talk to people, similar minds, similar interests. It can really just expand your mind and help you grow as a person. And also like sharing what you know as well. I think it's really empowering just to like help other people out or just say what you're doing and why you're doing it. And they can make up their own minds. 
But if they're like, oh yeah, I did do that because I'm doing it, it's pretty cool. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs>